Um, so sometimes we don't want to grow because it's uncomfortable. That has a lot um, of an effect on whether we'll be successful at conflict resolution. Um, there was somebody in my life, his name was Sprouty. I've mentioned him before. Over four or five years um, ago, and he used to tell me, I already grew enough. He doesn't know how to talk about feelings without dismissive, polarized thinking, or divisiveness, denial, projection, avoidance, controlling, trying, and battles, and winning, and right and wrong. And yet, fulfilling our potential is in the space between. So when we integrate, when we resolve, when we reconcile, Instead of the battles, it takes two sides and makes something new. Middle ground is coexisting, not merging, healing the divide, correcting patterns, goals used to be when in opposition, soothing and appeasing. Abandoning ourselves for other for peace is not the way. Compassionate, rather, to clear, you know, anger's cloudy, that's when we are able to have adaptive, creative responses. Reactions force our will, they're maladaptive, they're not fluid or flowing. They're, they're not inter, inter, inter R, right? Like uh, co-arising. In order to avoid conflict, you'll have some people who are overly agreeable or don't set boundaries, don't take space that they need. I'm gonna say I don't take up the space I need or I don't ask for the quiet time I need. And we can forget the original goal can cause us to actually lose the thing that we wanted. Because on the journey, we're like so busy trying to have it our way. When we experiment, it means we're willing to interpret the results. Actively avoiding or actively combating both take our power away. So we experiment with seeing what happens when we avoid actively and how we feel. And we could see what happens when we actively fight and see the results, right? And then we could see what really works. So compromise is committing to a new reality together. And it's okay to want someone to be different. And we can give the win if, if we need to win, but we also want like, to remember that making excuses is to avoid growth. If we're frustrated because life is not going the way we want it to go, or I want you to be growth oriented, or if you don't want to grow that we can't grow together, I wanted you to be sure and a good influence in this area for me because I'm working on it. Then we can start to understand what is confrontation. It's actually an opposition, a challenge, but also that's a reflection, a mirror. When we suffer because we blame others for our fight or flight response, you know, we, reckon, we start to, we, we're, we're preventing ourselves from seeing that not every battle is necessary to fight. Some are big, some are small. It has to be an intention. Other, they're not the only way, like there's more options in case by case when we're willing to be present. We don't have to like run away or cut off ghosts. Like, and we also don't have to attack. So, You know, there's a, you can call it a vow or without making a vow. It's possible to have peace and love no matter what, or you can say it's connecting with the source. And then I went to a workshop, we called it, you know, connecting with the beloved. The beloved is, the lover is beloved. And I did it with Living Deeply group. So we learn, we do it and then we understand. That's the Jewish practice for God on God's terms. We can talk about offering. So a sin offering is coming to the altar and confessing our embarrassment, our fear. And dignity is a high price if we have a wrong perception that leads to the unreconciled strata of consciousness. Releasing shame and pride around being a human who's unique and doesn't have all the answers and messes up sometimes and goes too far and loses my cool, takes it personally, is to recover from the belief that we're a sinner. Step into our innocence and recognize it's safe to return to ourself. Safe to be natural and free, safe to be as I am, safe to belong and be welcomed and be accepted and loved because God is a dwelling place in me and others, not, and that means not, not like killing ourselves, not bearing false witness, like to be the real self, to watch people for who they really are. And when we look at burnt offering, sin offering, the burning, aka spiritual self-immolation is to choose love by frying the circuits of the maladaptive patterns. Someone needs to tell the atoner to atone sometimes. It's a sacrifice. To be ready to release the attachment is to let go and learn. It's to become open. And a covenant that we make with God is incredibly sacred. God, to feel safe among us, to have preconditions for circulating between people. We can trust that our dreams are coming true. God wants us to know that our needs status first, not just rushing to meet others' needs. This is holistic healing that incorporates all beliefs and doesn't put 
an obstacle um, in front of a blind man, something like, or, or curse a deaf man. Um, you know, we have 613 mitzvot in the Torah for Jewish people, seven for the non-Jews. And they funnel <coughs> through the Ten Commandments. And we're called my people because we get healing and safety, int invitation to live with joy. And God blessed, you know, holy rest, being overdoing like on Sabbath, one day a week. And so in our outer sanctuary, there's purple, red, gold, tabernacle as a dwelling place. Like we're really in a physical world and we bring it in. We feel something's about to land as we make ourselves a target for liberative blessings, becoming the receiver energetically, taking too much mana, it rots. Rather, we can renew and bond with the Shechina every day and completely the darkness is incorporated and all characters exist inside and outside. We can bridge the gap and meet God on God's terms voluntarily. This is actually, this used to be actually too hard. Like, um, we, you know, we were in slavery, but then we take the remnants of slavery and uplift without grabbing it all, judiciously, mindfully use, take all the necessary, all that's necessary with prudence and learn how to tolerate hearing no or tolerate not getting our way. And now I'm going to share a little bit on communication. Dignity is not having false ears, genuinely rising above. So when we respect, have respect and gratitude for someone's listening, considering them, thinking before we talk, we don't forget that the goal in connecting and un is, is connecting and understanding with another. So even if it's self-understanding and self-connection, it's for their sake also. What and why are we sharing, how and when, not censoring, judging, repressing our voice. We matter and our needs matter. People cannot mind read and we have listening ears, not just vomiting on others, anyone who will listen, not expecting it will land or be received. Taking time without any communication is extremely effective self-care. We, we self-communicate and we don't always need to respond or initiate. We can grow in the space between being vulnerable and co-rising together. Stepping out the comfort zone, bridging the gap with the contents inside being shared with the, in the exterior. Release the shame. No one's more human or less than human. Learning about ourselves out loud rather than telling people who we are. Actions speak louder than words. We do first, we show. Not everyone will understand us. We won't understand everyone. But diarrhea of the mouth, solving others' problems versus using our presence and attention. It's like we can't stop ourselves. We're talking. So I'll stop here and um, I look forward to sharing uh, more tomorrow. Be well. Bye.